Uh, how many kids? Two. two. I have, t well, I have three daughters. Two of them are mine. One is my stepdaughter. You already knew all this, didn't you? Uh, there's nothing I can share with these uh, folks. Right. Here is Peter Bergman, stars as Jack Abbott, joined Brian R. in October of 89. What, what talk did he used to be on? Oh, I want to be as smart as this audience someday. Well, boy, don't you feel good about where you are, huh? Yeah, I am the There's life after man the life after. The man that fell into a toilet and came out with a new suit on. Yeah, that's, yes. that's me. <laughs> uh, and this uh, well, is it. Uh, thing, what, what, did you start to cough uh, on, uh, uh, did you notice uh, in the script, or what, how, how did it happen? <laughs> it happened very suddenly and, uh, and with very little warning, and uh, uh, as such is the way of daytime. Um, I did 10 years on it, so I really can't gripe. Uh, How's it feel but, to be on the number one show? But I like where I am right yeah, I now. I bet you I like do. It a lot. You're welcome. You're all right. Uh, Gene <laughs> Cooper is the only remaining member of the original cast of YNR. Shall we? Ah, <laughs> uh, and what did she do on the show? Tell the people. You know about that? You saw that? You didn't know this? No, I didn't. I mean, uh, well, now just stand. I'm learning. Uh, I, I am too. <laughs> you had. You had. They, they wrote a facelift into the script. Mm-hmm. He did. Billy After did. I decided to do it, uh, Mr. Bell decided, would it be okay? And I thought that would be a terrific idea since I'm going to have one. Catherine's may look a little better. God knows salt water in a seven-week cruise is not going to do it for you. So, uh, and a beautiful job he did, I must say. He did. That's the first show that I did for you. Incredible response to that oh, show. Oh, I'm pleased to hear that. Yeah. I am. Well, you're right. He did do an incredible uh, job. Were you scared? I mean, was it good? There's women out there thinking no. about it. Men, too. No, not so I, bad, I, huh? I, Gene Cooper was happy. I don't know how Catherine felt, and I didn't really care uh -huh. at that point. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was Bill Bell's. Bill Bell had to feel out how Catherine felt. I yeah. didn't. Uh, not well, this has it. got to be one of the reasons for the success. Boy, you really have been very, very aggressive. Uh, the, the, I say the producers and the script writers. Very much so. Producers yeah. are very aggressive. Even and yes, she is the mother <laughs> of L.A. Law's Corbin <laughs> Bernson. <laughs> You've done something right, Mom. Mm -hmm. and, these are all, and these are all my children. Yes. <laughs> well, boy, you sure hang around with good-looking people. Here's Doug Davidson, who, as you may know, appeared in the, mini, in the network miniseries titled I'll Take Manhattan. Guess what? Became a father in December. Yeah! Am I right? Holy cow. I'm not lying, am I? No, that's really something. She's here with you now. Yeah, well, not with me, but she's yeah. here. <laughs> well, what's it like, Pop? Well, uh, let's see. They said it was hard, and running four miles is hard. This is more like the Bataan Death March, I think. <laughs> the, the first eight weeks are, uh, well, moms, huh? It's a little difficult, isn't it? Did you really know, you know, this is... No, I'm, I'm serious. It was yeah. a lot harder It alters I... the life, does it? Yes, it does. Uh, well, you have our congratulations. Did I say what? Really, it was of, nothing. Is it a baby? <laughs> For me, anyway. Is it a baby what? Girl. Girl. Baby girl. Well, you're very lucky. The pressure's off. You've got your girl. <laughs> yes. Now you don't have to worry. Well, I just let's take a two-shot here, Brian. Uh-huh. Yes, this is Laura Lee Bell and her proud father, Bill. I've never seen him before in my life. Laura Lee. All right, cl cricket player. Uh, you actually started working on the show in the summer breaks. What a nice yes, thing to have. Yes, and the... still lived in Chicago. Uh -huh. it, was, it was ideal. It was great. Well, this has got to be the way to go through life, Bill. <laughs> I mean, no kidding. Five times you've won the Emmy. Uh, you created this show with your wife, uh, Lee Phillip, with whom everybody in Chicago and many places around our country are familiar. And it began in 1973, and you're still right. here. I wonder if you'd have $20 for me just till payday. I promise I'll get it back. <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful thing, huh? What's your secret, Brother great. Bell? The secret is good story, performers like these who yeah. are just fabulous, and others who aren't here who are part of the company. It's uh -huh. just, uh, it, and it's, it's a lot of dedication. It's a lot of uh, uh, doing interesting and different type stories. Uh, Paul Williams, you, did you, you have this terrible fight. Is that your wife with whom you're fighting? It's about, uh, she spied on you or you spied on her? Oh, you mean, you mean, yes. Huh? Yeah. Oh, I well, she, she set me up for uh, a murder rap, and really, we weren't, we weren't married, so uh, we were lovers, and she was, yeah. she was married to someone else. I want to show. You've got to see this. You've got to see this. Listen, this show has dealt with date rape, and we will show you the scene. 
uh, and ask these uh, members of the creative community, how do you resolve that? And how do you in introduce this particular material into a essentially entertainment, popular culture vehicle in a redeeming way? We'll talk about that. But I want you to see Paul Williams at work. Boy, are you upset, and so is she. Roll the tape. Here's a scene from The Young and the Restless. I already told you I know about Adrian Hunter. What do you know? I know that you were lovers the whole time we were together. Paul, oh, please listen. I am through listening. Don't lie to me. I'm not lying. God, I am sick of your lies. For months I waited for you to tell me the truth. I gave you every opportunity to support me. But no, you just couldn't find it in your heart to believe in my innocence. Oh, I know how hard you tried, but there is all that evidence against me. Do you remember that? Do you? Oh, but wait, that was just the beginning. Then I had to stand by and watch you throw yourself at Victor Newman. I remember an evening in a private dining room when you did a little strip tease to try and seduce him. Oh, that was a charming display, Cassandra. Just charming. You had Hunter, you had me. God only knows why you needed Newman as well. How do you know about that? Oh, my God, you were spying on me. Well done. You're very good. That's the only way you can... The only way you can watch them. Yes, while I'm in this neighborhood. Hi, I love the show. Um, what I wanted to ask you, I think subjects like that are really good. What do you think of gay soap operas? Do you think there's a place, and that's for everybody on the panel? Yeah, yeah. this is why we asked you to the Donahue show. Uh, Great scene, Doug. Listen, uh, maybe we ought to show the next scene before, they, before you answer that. Uh, <laughs> well, there is a gay soap that's uh, making its way into public access, and uh, during our visit out here, we discussed the issue, and I think the people ah. are bouncing off that. You want to show it now? You want to? Okay. Here's here's Paul again. I keep calling. Here's Doug Davidson at work. This is the same. Watch this from Young and Restless. Apropos of your question, do you believe this? I'm telling you, I'm shocked. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Look at the chest on that girl, huh? I know, I'm so jealous. <laughs> I don't think this is going to work. I just... I'll have to try a different gown. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. She's <laughs> more beautiful than you. Well, I guess, I guess I'm lucky to have a little girl, then, aren't I? Yes, you are. I teach her how to dress, how to walk in heels. Uh, very brave. Uh, now, Bill, you know, this is reaching again. Uh, this is part of making your show entertaining, and uh, absolutely, and it works, and they absolutely. like it. Absolutely. What was this? A little? Was this just a walk on a funny thing, or was this? Well, he was about to go and and uh, and follow this gal, uh, who uh, Cassandra and she was going abroad, and he wanted to follow her, and he, he knew he needed disguises. And so we did a thing throughout a show where he put on six different disguises, and this was far and away the best. All right, all right, but what, wait, wait, wait. Okay, what wait. What should be mentioned is that, I'll never forget, the day that this happened, my dad turned on the monitor and called my brother and said, I don't know who this woman is, but she is gorgeous on our show. He didn't even know it was Doug and fell in love with her. <laughs> It's true. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's right, Father knows best. <laughs> Paul, this, Paul, this is for you. How do you work yourself up for those arguments? How do you make yourself so mad and mean? Oh, boy. That's, well, it's really just concentration. It's as simple, I think, as playing the situation. You just focus in on what you're trying to accomplish. And in this case, what she had done to me and uh, put me through. And it's sort of... Uh, evolve from there. Peter, aren't you a bit of a schlemiel in this uh, series? Well, uh, I wouldn't put it that uh, way. Well, no. uh, well, uh, <laughs> well, isn't your character is different is the point. It's got a little different spin than... Well, there are nicer characters on the show. Um, oh. Uh, no, but I mean, a it's couple. a different character than you portrayed in All My Children. Oh, an absolutely different character than I yeah. portrayed and in All like My And you like that, children. I bet. I like it a lot, yes. Yeah. Helps you stretch. 
Um, how do you feel about... Because a guy like me, I'm getting tired of being just, you know, a nice guy that everybody loves. I mean, it, you know, it gets boring after a while. You are a nice guy. <laughs> um, how do you feel about people that, that look at uh, daytime soap operas as a stepping stone to nighttime or films? Or do you feel that's an art in itself, being a daytime soap star? To Anyone? art in itself. I think it's very underrated. Uh, I, I, I mean, you're the viewing audience. I mean, let's face it, you're ten times more loyal to us than you are people at nighttime. Yeah. And we thank you for it. That's so true. We must be saying something. Yeah. For the uh, amount of work that uh, is required of us to put our show together uh, compared to the amount of work that you physically have to do for nighttime shows, I think they should say that nighttime shows are stepping stones to daytime. Right. <laughs> we do in one day. We do in one day what it takes them eight days to do. We're editing, yeah. music, uh, all of that. We are doing in one day what they're doing in eight days in prime time. So I think we know not only our craft, I think sometimes we're mm. a hell of a lot better actors and uh, actresses, don't you think? Uh, you you're, I tell you what, you make <laughs> us feel good about our, you make us feel good about our business. You know, because we, everybody figures you gotta be 23 in order to get anywhere, and my, well, haven't you just now, we call this legs, you know. You have had a, you've hit the long ball for a long time. Yeah. Is, when did the show begin, 73? 73, right. and I joined it at about six. You, I gotta January tell you a fun thing. Right. Every time, every, I've been out on personal appearances with Laura Lee. Now, when I first met Laura Lee, she was three and a half years old. <laughs> So they will ask me for, about something in the story. When did what happen? Yeah. And I say, Laura Lee, when was that? And she was, says, I was only four. No. You know, I'm, every time I turn to her and she'll look at me and go, don't ask me. I was just learning my name at the time. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it's been a good life, huh? I, it's, it's been a marvelous life because as, as I have aggressed with each year, uh, then, of course, that's his job. And as long as he cares to do it, I'll just yeah. do what he tells me. But I'll you're, an, you're an actor with security. Yes, it's a very huh. secure thing. Did you yeah. ever have, did they ever say, would you ever wonder what they were talking about in those production meetings? Did you ever think maybe you were going to be written out? I don't know, man. Oh, sure, I think every actor does, especially in daytime. It's very easy if something happens. I mean, they can say, well, now for, to pick up on something, they let someone go. Except Bill is not famous for that. Other shows are. Yes. I'd like to know what time their day starts and what time it ends. And do they have many days off a week? Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, six, seven, no, and maybe. And that fellow there, Peter, represents, it uh, looks a lot like Richard Chamberlain. He does, Is yes. he a relative? No. Uh, no, he, uh, he's not a relative of mine. I think that's a great compliment. I, I do, He's a nice-looking fellow. I do, too. You work from what? Uh, all night long and seven through the six, generally, is the... Well, seven a.m. to that's six. That's what we're The plan. To. Yes, sir. How much input do the characters, do they have in what direction the characters are going? What's going to happen on a show from a... A weekly basis. Do you have any input at all on how it's written? Um, well, not really. <laughs> unless, unless Bill, you could probably answer. Unless we do something that might inspire him to write a certain yeah, direction, I have no idea where it. that where that begins and ends. Well, I'm one of the few people who makes it up as, as I go along, yeah. and and uh, there's no question I play off of what I get back from you guys. Yeah, you and, do. And, uh, and, and, and very few do. And sometimes I'll be far enough ahead so that I have some sense of direction. But go. Yeah. This question's for Jeannie Cooper. How, how is it playing two different characters? Totally exhausting. I'm so happy I'm here, I can't tell you. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you're here, you're I not got, working. And I got to see Phil again. You That's don't know if he's Marge or Kay, though. I, yeah, right. You don't know who I am sitting here. <laughs> yes. Let me, let me get somebody who hasn't had a shot. Yes. Yes. This is for all of you. Can we believe anything that we read in Soap Opera Digest? Or all oh. of what we read in Soap Opera Digest? If it's the truth. Yes. If it's the truth, believe it. You can believe it. About okay. half of it, yeah. About half of it. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, joining us late, and for very good reason, he's been working as well. Here's a, he has been on The Young and the Wrestles for 10 years. Uh, he's appeared in more than 120 TV programs, many films. He won Soap Opera Digest Award as Outstanding Daytime Actor in a Leading Role. Here is, the character is Victor Newman. Eric Braden is here. with the cast of Young and the Restless, and we'll be back in just a moment. Well, there... Right. 
Well, Eric, we're glad you're here, and so is this audience. We've been talking about you since you were gone. I had no idea you were married nine times. It, you know, it came up here in the audience. <laughs> that, that was news to me until now as well. Yes. We're glad you're here. We should say that you were born in West Germany. You came to America after high school, and boy, didn't you find work. And what a wonderful uh, ensemble you're with. I know you know that, though, don't you? The last nine years have been the happiest of my professional career. I'm sure of that. Yes. An actor yeah, that really on. On. <laughs> Hi, I wanted to tell Peter that it's nice having him on Young and the Rest as Jack. He's really good. And I want to know, um, Doug, are you and Lauren ever going to get back together even though she's married? Well, you're asking the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm not telling. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is for Jeannie. Um, do you do any theater right now or have you ever? Uh, I'm not doing any theater right now. Thank you for asking. Yeah, the theater is my background. Her life is a theater. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I'd like to know, is Laura Lee single, and if so, are you available for dinner tonight? Oh, I am single. Dad, is it okay? <laughs> His name is Michael. Where are you well, taking her? We'll have yeah. to find yeah. out where you're going to eat first. You are a beautiful young woman, uh, Laura Lee, and let me just make this point here. Your beloved father, who loves you forever and always, has really given you a scene that is as challenging as anybody's, any actress is ever going to have. A guy comes, a guy you know comes on to you, gets a little bit rough, won't stop, won't say take no, and you have to pull this off and carry this, uh, make this a believable, and you do. This is a wonderful piece of acting, a very powerful piece of writing. It will make our audience wince, as I'm sure it did the regular viewers of Young and the Restless. Here, and, and as you watch this, remember, her daddy wrote this scene, and then you and I'll talk about this. Roll <laughs> the tape. What are you doing? What are you doing? You know exactly what I'm doing. Do. Now, come on, you're scaring me with this. No, 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 no. Cricket, 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 cricket. Honey, there's nothing to be afraid of. Really. We both know that you want this as much as I do. Now, wait a second. If that's what you think, you're wrong. Oh, stop it. Terry, you are hurting me. Look, I like you, but I don't want this. Don't fight me. I'm going to scream. Wait. I'm going... No one's going to hear you, really. No one's going to hear you. Listen to me. It's love me. I mean it, now. I mean it, honey, okay? I'm not fooling around. Listen. Want... Stop. Listen fighting. to me. Let's talk about this. I don't want this. the only scene you did that day. Do you know, we did it You twice. must have been depressed for three weeks. I would be lying to say that after we did the first take, I did not feel like a significant thing had affected me. I, I was in shock. Um, you mean you were numb? I, I really was. Uh, I wanted him to really fight with me, and we really did. In fact, you, the bruises... You certainly created the illusion. I mean it. It's a wonderful Thank piece you. of concentration. Um, it, did you do one take, or did you have to do we one? Did, we did two. You did two. Um, <sighs> Uh, all right, Daddy. I knew it was coming. Uh, oh, I knew it was coming. Now, what's the point here, and how does this re how, how does this resolve in the in the storyline? Well, it resolved this way, Phil. Uh, this is this is an epidemic, and and we and 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 we played this over three months, and we took it all the way from the rape to every step of the way where 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 he has picked up the the inevitable denial right. uh, by him. We take it to court. We we go into trial. We deal. The victim with... gets raped again, so to speak, with well, uh, attack in the courtroom and all this. You know how we. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. absolutely, absolutely, uh -huh. uh, and and all of that. And then we, we we dig into the schools. We dig into the schools that don't tell their students that this is going on, uh -huh. which is, which is compounding a felony. And and we dealt with that. And finally, uh, we resolved it after about uh, about ten weeks. But. 
this is the kind of story we like to do more than just tell a story. We like to impact our it's audience. Because it with reflects this kind the re of story. real world. In, uh, Pardon me? It reflects the issues that are out there. Absolutely, Phil. Absolutely. Uh -huh. You did with the mastectomy with uh, Dorothy Green when exactly. she was on. A lot of women's lives were saved, by the way, because they went and they, they got their test. Yeah. Bill, did you intentionally thing. schedule that date rape segment so that it fell during the summer when the Absolutely. teenage kids were more likely to be watching? Every summer we do uh, a sequence, uh, a series of thir about 13 weeks that's aimed at, at the young people, at the younger people. Yeah. And to this day, <laughs> thank you. And, and there, there's not a day that goes by to this day that we don't get letters from young women who saw that and who have profited by it, who say, thank you, because I knew what to do and how to act and how not to react. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, TV and the media in general is getting more explicit. And we have our young people who are watching these TV programs, and I think some of the love scenes could be just as effective without going as far as they they do, and I'm, I mean, worried about I, it. Agree with I am you. concerned about it. I agree with you totally. Uh, I think I think YNR does more in, in sensuality than it does in sexuality. Now, if you're going to do a rape and if you're going to get a message across, then you, you, you've got to go as far as we went, and I don't think we crossed the line to any great extent. I mean, what was happening was happening, and we all knew it was happening. And right. it has, you can't sugarcoat rape. You've got yeah. to really present well, it as the ugly thing it is. Yeah. I think her question, though, goes more to the eroticism. Uh, I, Eric, I want you in this, and all of you. Uh, well, I personally, in other words, I have nothing against eroticism on television at all. I have something against the obscenity of guns on television. Yeah. I have nothing against eroticism. Mm. It is precisely that eroticism that made all of us be here on this earth. Yeah, now that you mention it, yeah. <laughs> this gets rid of us. First of all, I want to say this is just great, and my mother-in-law is going to kill me for not bringing her. This is her favorite <laughs> show. But I was wondering for Peter, how hard was it for you to put Dr. Cliff Werner in the back of your mind and step into this new character? It was not difficult at all. I was very lucky to walk into a very well sketched out, very well worked out character with lots of different levels, with lots of different complex relationships with different characters on the show. And I didn't have to just walk in and hang out. I walked in and dove into it. And that made it especially did. easy for me. Did. Trial by fire. He's been, he's been fabulous. <laughs> fabulous. This question is for Gene. Do you get your motherly pride offended when they make your son look like such a bad character on L.A. Law? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's marvelous because that is as foreign to uh, Corbin as, as anything could be. And he just loves it so, but he loves to play the pouty little boy. And I said, well, that's okay. But he's nothing like that. So he has a grand time with it. He yeah. really does. He's very protective of Arnie Becker. Right. I can't, I can't criticize him. Was he a little brat kid? Yeah, little brat, little Oliver. <laughs> little Oliver is going to be one year old next month. The greatest pictures of you and Oliver uh, at the party. Right. Ah. Were you a working mother then, Jean? <clears throat> when I had Corbin yeah. or Oliver? <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> yes, I was. I worked uh, with all three. Uh, uh, Corbin, Colin, Karen. I worked until I was two weeks before delivery. And then I went back to work uh, about four weeks. Melody is the same thing with hers. I mean... My gosh, my my oldest daughter there, for heaven's sakes, used to yeah. come in, say, oh, any time now, any time now. But, uh, uh -huh. She did the same thing, but Bill did write it in. We Twice. found out it was uh, Victor's child, however. <laughs> Which uh, is I've been watching Young and the Restless since the early 70s, and I just wanted to say that Jean looks as great now as she did then. Yo. Yo. You want to see it? You do, Gene. Uh, you're also working for a living. Two characters. It's such now this fun. one, I'm going to show them. You got a gold tooth, honey, <laughs> and red hair. You betcha. Boy, I'll tell you. You, Damn. you deliver, pro. You deliver. Here you are. Boy, should we all have a diner at the corner of our street uh, like be this? Fun. Wouldn't oh that be fun? boy, when we're all looking for someone to talk to. Here you are at work, uh, Gene Cooper in Y and R. Roll the tape. Yeah. 
Well, I tell you, soft lips, you can really empty your room fast. You got a, a personal problem? No, I showered this morning. <laughs> Don't impress me. I've been around this joint so long, I can't even smell the grease. All right, you, uh, you had enough or, uh, you really want a good case of clamps? I think I'm finished. Well, I don't, I don't mean to never mind me. I'm not on commission. See, I depend on tips from strangers like you. You're a real character, you know that? Huh? What's your name? Marge. I turned you on, didn't I? I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I give you my phone number, but I don't give it out. Only to guys who ask. So, so what if I'm asking? Well, then you'd have about an eight-hour wait. I just came out. If only four, I'd be tempted. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't tempted anybody in 30 years. <laughs> That's the first time I've seen you. <laughs> That's I just, the very, me, Phil, I'm that's sorry. very first time I have seen that. I refuse to look at that. Oh, I, I've only started recently looking at Marge. <laughs> I refused to look because I didn't want to be intimidated by her. And I thought if the reports came back and Bill didn't say, you're fired, get out of here, it must be working. But I was frightened to death. I wanted, I didn't want anyone to stop liking Catherine because I, I feel, I, I like the lady. But I wanted them to like Marge. And I'm in the middle and I have to make choices. And then I hope the writing keeps making choices and we keep going back and forth. But I wanted you to like Marge. I mean, I do, but I want you to keep on liking Catherine. I do. It's yeah. just, please don't hate me. If you do, hate him. Yes. Uh, hate him. Very good. Very good advice. I am impressed with uh, Melody. Uh, I don't think, is there, has there been a time you've been out of work? I mean, really, uh, since eight you've been working. Uh, actually, three, but... Um, we well, how old were you when you were in Marnie? I was eight. That was my first film. So you were directed by Alfred Hitchcock when you were eight years old? Yes. Yeah. Although at that time, I, I didn't, he was just another director to me. I, now I can look back and be impressed by it. Then wow. I didn't even know who he was. Huh. He was just very frightening. <laughs> I was a little scared of him. And uh, your, ba your children are not uh, about to enter medical school, are they? How old are your kids? Uh, well, Jennifer, my stepdaughter, is 17, and she's thinking of going into law. Oh, yeah. I'm almost pretty close to it. My seven-year-old wants to be an actress. Um, we shall see about that. And then I have a 15-month-old. 15-month-old? Yes. Now, how are we doing, Mom? And what do we do? And do, I assume we have a nurse, do we? Oh, yes. Yes. Now, does is she, he, your she, baby? Uh, your baby. They're all she's, believe me. All she's, three daughters. It says that here. I should have looked at my own note. Now, did she come to the studio, or how do you do this? When she was first born, for several months, uh, I brought her to work. It, it's so wonderful working where I do because yeah. uh, it's not a problem. There's no hassle. No, people aren't upset that you've got a baby in a trailer or whatever. I've got a beautiful dressing room. I can bring the, the nanny and the baby to work, and uh, I did it with my seven-year-old uh -huh. also. Did you nurse? Well, yes, I did, Phil. <laughs> This is a legitimate question. I, if you laugh at me, I'll lose my confidence. And Here's the point. You I mean, you nurse up. and then, you know, button up the old Everlast uh, maternity bra she and go out and do your scene. Is that right? I mean, you did, huh? Well, yes, you have to do that. You should button up first. We like <laughs> I got to. And we'll be back in just a moment. I just want to say that I'm so in love with Peter. I have been for many years. I've watched him on All My Children since the day he started. And I was so disappointed that he left. I mean, it really crushed me. Well, that you're going to have to turn that channel I out. will. Yeah. I'm telling you, yeah. I will. Did you leave uh, of your own free choice? I mean, did you choose to leave? It was not my choice to leave, no. No. And can no. I have a kiss after the show? <laughs> You'll have to work that out with my wife, who is backstage. Uh, well, work, have him work it out with my wife. <laughs> this question's for Victor. I was wondering if you're married and how many children you have and how you brought these real-life situations into your role. Yeah, that's what I want to know, too, Victor. 
<laughs> been married for 20 years, 20 odd years, have a son who is now just turned 20, and been through a lot in my life to draw from emotionally, so the scenes really are not that difficult. I mean, acting is a way to, I think, demonstrate and manifest whatever conflict one feels and unresolved problems one has. It's a wonderful way to manifest it, I think. You came here when you were 10 years old. That was 18. I'm sorry, when you were 18. Right. Uh huh. The wall was there when you came. The wall was there. I was in, in fact, I was behind that wall. No, wait a minute. I left in 59. Nope. So the wall went, went up in 62, 63. Yes. So it wasn't there yet. No. Uh huh. Well, you must be reading the paper, my good man. I read the papers every day. About your homeland. Any thoughts? Uh, it's a very complicated process. I think a lot of other countries around Germany are worried about reunification. And who gets what territory and should it and the uh, Well, I think that's pretty well determined, I think, more or less. Uh -huh. It's a very complex issue. I quite agree. This question is addressed to the men on the panel. Um, do you become, how do you, or do you become sexually aroused when you're in <laughs> some of these more intimate scenes? And, I mean, that's, I was just curious. Okay. Uh, take it, guys. Yeah. We, it's all yours. <laughs> we try to screen the audiences <laughs> every once in a while. You know, the funny uh, thing is I've heard that question asked by my wife as well. I bet you have. <laughs> well, before you answer the question, Jack Abbott, here you are at work. I'll tell you this. Talk about creating an illusion. Whoa. Turn on the air conditioning from the young and the restless. Only I knew what he was thinking. Well, I'll tell you what, Jack. Since I really do like you so much, um, I'll just pop in on Victor and see if I can find out anything. You really do that for me? Well, sure. That is the reason you came by here in the first place, isn't it? You are such a wonderful friend. How can I ever, ever thank you? You can kiss me. I can? Yeah. But promise me you'll keep one foot on the floor. Should have this job. Yes, yes. Um, okay. I'm hooked on a daytime show, but it's on another network. What does your ha show have that would hook me into your show? <laughs> One, two, three. Maybe. Uh, uh, <laughs> best answer. Yes. Hi, this is for Doug. I was wondering, did it take a lot of coaxing to, for you to dress up as a woman, or did you just do it because you thought it would be the fun? Um, he does it all the time, anyway. Go ahead, Doug. Go ahead, Doug. Uh, Come on, be honest, Doug. Tell him. Tell him. I won't tell you why. That's how I come to work. <laughs> no, uh, actually, it was, it was um, in the context, it was a lot of fun, because we had a lot of different characters to do. And it was, it was probably the, the, the most fun, because it, uh, it was really the only one I could walk out into the real world and probably get away with. I mean, the other, I had appliances all over my face with the other folks. It would have been pretty obvious. Yes. I enjoy the show, but this question is for Bill. I wanted to know, are you going to write a love interest in for Nathan? Since Absolutely. Stephanie Absolutely. Williams We're going to have a very strong Nathan love interest story starting in May. Uh, this question is also for Bill. Um, I've been watching it for seven or eight years, and every time I watch it, somebody will have a child, and I'll come back, you know, like after spring vacation, and the child will be like eight years old. <laughs> what is the deal with this? How, how does this come name, into name play? One, name one, sh uh, we don't have a child that ages that much. Melody's child is, is, this, is aged day by day, the way every child in America is aged day by day. Uh, it's the same child that, that I don't know of any other children, I think do you? About Philip, I think. Ba is oh, your question oh, directed at Philip? Well, even the baby, though. No, 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 no uh, the no, one that, uh, uh, the oh, uh, junior. Okay. Uh, number two. Well, one, here's, two, here's three, the thing. Yeah. Well, let me answer you this way, though. Jill's son was also, she said. 
She's talking Philip. about dead Philip. Yeah. Right. It's, Philip. it's the same one. <laughs> Thank you. In, 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 a word, in a word, let me answer you this way, and why all soaps do it. There comes a period of time when children do not provide story, where they are just there. And, and you want to get, you want to get children, you want to age them to a point where they can become a factor in the story uh, in their family. You back see? here, back here. Yeah. Question Two for words. Bill. Um, as a writer of the show, I watch several soap operas off and on. I know it's the last time a certain character may be written out of the show and make return in a month or time, and it may be a different character, per se, the person. Does a person have an option to come back and say, okay, you're bringing my character back, Do I, can I audition for it, or is there an agreement where, you know, they can, in other words? Well, everyone's under contract, and, and there are times when, when, when a character will have, its role will no longer be required, but, but uh, uh, other than that, uh, sometimes people t go away on vacation. Uh, Eric's, Eric and Melody are going to be going shortly, so we're going to have to leave them out for a period of time. Yes. I wanted to ask Bill, what was the most provocative storyline that you think you've ever written? Well, it goes over five shows. Uh, gee, I have so many favorites, it's really hard. This is a cop-out, I know, and, and, and I really don't mean it to be, but, but it's, it's, really, it's really difficult. I think in terms of, uh, of, of uh, I mean, we did, th we did a story on mastectomy. We did a story on, on, on smoking. 15, uh, or 15 years ago, uh, when I was smoking four packs a day while I was writing the story, and 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 uh, you know, and and, and we we've done a lot of stories with a, no, with a lot of impact. Oh, uh, the first yes, one, with the Brooks. Uh, yeah, with yes, the Brooks with the Brooks, with the Brooks girls. Over here, date rape. Yeah. Uh, Bill. Yes. Uh, I appreciate all the uh, the shows you do with the the issues. Uh, I also think there's great value in the relationship of love, uh, like uh, um, uh, Cliff and the Luke and Laura, uh, I think, I I'm hoping that maybe I'll see in your show something of that you mean value. Where they're actually married right in the there. continues and there's right nobody there. here. Uh, right the, there. Well, besides that, the, the, uh, even more than that, that <laughs> we're the kind of, kind of relationships that, that really teach us and we learn about sure. no, really I know, that kind I know of what thing. you're saying. You're th like 30 something or 20 something uh, where you deal with 40 couples. 40 nothing. And, 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 <laughs> and I'll tell you, I don't, I, that's not my style and it should be because uh, there is something to be gained. Yes. The question is how many will you hold your audience for a story that doesn't have somebody mysteriously knocking on the front door? And we'll be back in just a moment. to the entire panel. Yeah. Has the AIDS scare affected any of your lovemaking scenes? Uh, the, the union did come out with, uh, rather, with guidelines on this. AIDS and the creative community and deep kissing, et cetera, et cetera. What can they and can they not make you do? What was the outcome? <laughs> it becomes an individual actor's choice, largely. So, uh, yeah, huh. I'm not aware of an example uh, of, of someone refusing to do uh, a scene like that, a kissing scene. Yes. Uh, that isn't true. At the height of the scare, I think some of us talked to each other and we were trying to be careful because there was confusion as to whether that was infectious or not, yes. or whether the transfer of saliva would carry that virus or not. Yeah. Some of us choose to use those uh, body condoms you've seen in the naked gun. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to ask all of you that you have so much effect on the people like us. I came to this country 26 years ago. Unfortunately, you weren't on at that time. I got hooked up another so. You got hooked but, up? Oh. Yes. <laughs> but I watch you guys once in a while, but it's so good because that's how the people, you know. You better watch them every day from now I on. Do. Now. I do. I really English? do. But you speak English? English? Did you learn to speak our language by watching daytime? Yeah. You hear yeah. that a lot, do you? You yeah. betcha. Yeah. yeah. Do any of you have any input into the script with your characters if you're given a storyline or specific lines to say that you say, that, that just doesn't work for my character, can you change it? Eric, why don't well, you answer that? I answer that and I'll tell you how. We are 25 actors, we are 25 actors on the, on the show. And we talk to our head writer daily. In other words, he's on the phone with us all the time. And we ask him to write the lines that we ask him to write, and he does it without any hesitation at all. 
Uh, Eric, I want to show. I want to show you. <laughs> uh, here are Eric and uh, Melody, uh, Victor Newman, Nikki Reed Newman. It's Christmas time. Watch this. Uh, Eric Braden, Melody Thomas Scott. Oh, your Christmas tree. Young is and the fantastic. rest. Fantastic. Oh, are you giving me some kind of ultimatum? You bet you. Because you can't have it both ways. <sighs> I cannot believe you. How can you do that to me? What kind of a position are you putting you me in? You tell him it's your family. And he ain't part of that family yet. Not yet. Even in your hands. Either the children spend Christmas and Christmas Day with their father or with that guy. Damn it, Victor. Damn it. If you hadn't have gotten this stupid divorce, we wouldn't have to worry about this. What the hell does the divorce have to do with it? A lot. You think about it. You think about what you decided. I just want to show it off. I promise we're going to get... You're going to go see your daddy. Can we see it? Just a beautiful child. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we better get a tape of this This one. This is uh, Calissa. 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 Yeah. Here's your daddy. She Gee, I hope she doesn't cry now. Wouldn't that be really embarrassing? <laughs> there you go. Hi, baby. Uh, look at this. Oh, Hi, baby. She has this child is how old? Two months? Yeah. Uh, born in December. I'll Just tell you this, ribs. you can Look work and... Ribs. Yes, yes. Exact same thing. <laughs> yes. yes. Do you, what do you do when an, if an actor refuses to play the part or the scene that you want them to do? That, that rarely happens. Uh, we, we have too much communication and... and uh, no, that happened. very rarely happens. Yes. Is acting as, as, is as glamorous as the world makes it? And, and also, how many actors get started like through some kind of connections in the business compared to those that get started just through their Sport own? talent. It's yeah. more talent. You have yeah, seven you have seconds to answer this question. Yeah. Yeah. That's your I don't know that it ever happened. Yes, I'm almost out of time here. Yes. Laura Lee, you played such a great role during the date rape scene. I was just wondering if, how you prepared for that. Uh, I went to a lot of clinics, date rape clinics, and talked to a lot of people. Got a lot of research. And we'll be back in just a moment. How far in advance you know your storylines and when, to, when we see it on TV, how far you've taped it ahead of time? It depends on the time of year because we start taping on Saturdays to get two weeks off at Christmas. I think we're nine days ahead and nine we days. basically a week and a half here. right now. We're written two yeah. months ahead. Yes. I, I, Bill, this is to you. Um, do you ever use actors who are unknowns? And if you do, uh, do I have a shot? <laughs> sure do. We were all unknown at one time or another, believe me. Yes. It's been such a pleasure to be here with you well, and hold you. your hand. Thank okay. you so much. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 just, but, but just for one, one other person besides him, I would like to have a kiss from Victor Newman. <laughs> we'll see if I can work that out. Yeah. This is this is direct to Mr. Bell. Yes. Uh, the YNR started on a half an hour. Will the bowl... No, Service sorry, is yes. provided and promotional fees so paid by the following. Hour at all? New Jergens Aloe and Lanolin and Vitamin E and Lanolin Skin Conditioning Bars. Now bursting with skin softening ingredients. Effident cleans away stains and freshens dentures. Effident, America's number one denture cleanser. Limousines for Donahue Show guests furnished by Music Express Limousine Service, New York and Los Angeles. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Stay tuned for Sally Jesse Raphael next here on Channel 10. Uh,